here we go. So we're working on create to make the light setup. And I have here the main light source, the sun, and it's coming through the open windowless hole on a wall. So I uh, made a decision that I will not use uh, materials from the Unreal Engine uh, Evermotion uh, house, but I will use my own lights and materials on the most important ones, which were causing some noise on me. And here you can see that this is my light setup like this. The sun is uh, coming through the hole with the window frame. Yes, but no glass at all there. And uh, that's because the glass caused too much noise on a way. Mm. So I will now go through all these lights one by one on this on this uh, house file, this one shot. Trust me, it won't take too long. You can you can easily uh, come along with me. And uh, here we have it on path traced. Uh, it's it's uh, on path traced mode. I realized that I can't lit up the whole room uh, with uh, one light source like the sun that will glow and bloom out the whole room because it will lead to too much noise. I have to kind of mimic that with other lights. So I made this sunlight coming through the large window there not so strong. And uh, I build up other lights to support that feeling of sunlight coming. And here we have a kitchen light. Uh, I use just these rectangle lights mainly because those large spherical, spherical lights, they, they also tend to give up some kind of uh, flashing noise on human skin, for example. So I have here some sphere lights, but they are very, 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 very small. Uh, and I, I just have them on these kind of special places. So I don't even try to lit up the whole room with these kind of large spare lights. And then we have these lights on the wall above each painting. Uh, and of course there is a correct sized rectangle light in the slot. And also I used the Omniverse Material Libraries native uh, plaster, white plaster for the walls. Uh, the Unreal Engine glass and the white wall, rock wall, cement wall, plaster, it, it gave me too much noise. Uh, so I replaced them with Omniverse native ones, the two most important noise sources, glass and, and the plaster. And now I do some large disc lights here to mimic that main light of the room. And here I have a kind of product shot, standard large disc light above the products on a table. It gives you a good overall product shot starting point to light stuff. And <clears throat> this is my main angle for the image where we are now. Uh, and I jumped now to the back of the room where is the lamp and I have inside there very small spare light giving this nice uh, light pads on the room. And here we have some boxes in front of the table and they are also lit the same way, this kind of large disc just above them. You can see it on and off here. And one nice tip 
uh, about reflections on the floor, you have a thing called specular multiplier. And you can turn it off like this, so the reflections from the floor are disappeared. Uh, there are some in the ray tracing mode rendering, they are less if you have this on zero, but on the path trace like this, they are totally gone. So, so this is a very good tip to use. And here we go, we have a final uh, lights on this scene. One of them is this large disk light upwards. It is lighting up the, the roof. And here I have those disks too. They are mimicking the light floating off from the lamp. So these kind of things makes it easier for you to control the overall feeling. You can have this dark, contrastful, designed light in the room. Uh, so in the end, it was just a blessing for me not to use this one bright sun source to reflect around the room. And here we have this chair, this beautiful chair and the beautiful reflections of the floor too. So that's it. And then the characters, they are lit with very simple, large rectangular lights nearby them. So I'm here mimicking the way that light would bounce from the wall and also from the back of the room because that's the main light source. So very easy, simple setup for this. Nothing, nothing special. And here we have long light going on because the guy is walking and even though I'm in Create, I don't see the animation here because it's sequenced in, in Machinima. So anyway, I jump to Machinima very soon, but here it was uh, made already. And now I will show you also very fastly this, this shot, the bedroom shot. How did I light it up that one? So let's go to path trace mode. And I again have the sun there. You can see it's off and on it is not so much bouncing all around, because that's the noise problem. Uh, that will give you noise problems. So again, I will decrease it quite much. So I will just have the tint of light there on the wooden furnitures. And then I will make myself with mostly rectangular lights the overall feeling. So here I start by uh, lighting up this this uh, little flower and then I will make the roof light and, and then I will make uh, this uh, cylinder light as we have here for the boxes. So I'm trying to take advantage of this long shaped cylinder light to light the parts that are important to my camera of the boxes. And uh, here is a backlight, it's kind of fit key light to these boxes, mimicking the sunlight. And this is the most important for the character, one strong plate behind her, and then cylinder light in front of her to give that kind of a nice little creasy feeling of the skin and, and SSS. I make a fast render with it with the uh, real-time mode just to see how it will cut in the in the larger picture the whole advertisement and I realized that the painting needs a little bit of light so I duplicate the flower light here like that and I move it uh, in front of the painting and this way I can raise the painting's value because in the end that's where we're aiming for here in this shot. Yeah, like that. That's nice. 
Okay, so these are the basics. And now here we are in Premiere. I will see how my real-time real -time rendered uh, stuff come in. And I have to change it to 24p. That's always very important because Premiere uh, interprets them wrongly. I have to change them manually. And here I see, okay, I dealt the old one from the timeline. And uh, for me, it looks like a good. I just cut it out a few frames to make the cut even better. And then this frame, <clears throat> this image is is made with a special attention to detail. So I used iClone's live face uh, application on my iPhone. iClone has made an application for iPhone called live face. And here I use it. So I just shoot my own face with the application on the mobile phone and I record it for the iClone software and, and I can do it in context. So I had here the same angle as I have in the Omniverse. So I just played it five times to get it done. And then I again decrease the expression strength. See, I put it on 60 because otherwise the smiling mm -hmm, would be a little bit too much and too obvious like a puppet. But this little 60% effect of the whole motion uh, gives it uh, more real, more real and, and beautiful feeling. And here we have it also in Omniverse. So it really comes through. And, and the latest iClone have the USD export option. Okay, and now we are about to move to the windows. The windows are made with a nice trick. Because as I told you earlier in this tutorial, uh, I had to delete the glasses because of the extra noise. <coughs> so here you can see I have red reflections and now it's just the way it's rendered, pitch black with alpha channel. So first I made up there an image of a city and I had it real there, a frame, so I get the accurate camera movements. And then I just uh, created it with Premiere to be less contrast. And uh, then I put the main file. And after that, I will put two extra reflection renderings. They are just uh, reflecting the lights of the scene. And, and they are real-time rendered, so you don't waste time on those. But it will give you a whole lot of realism into the scene. Same here. The very same setup. I have the backplate and reflection render. They both are real time. And only the most important one with the alpha channel is, is path traced on rendering form. And uh, I also like this approach because it gave me a possibility to play with the feeling of the backdrop image. It's a kind of a designing. When you can when you can have it like this, uh, so this is kind of suburban feeling that I wanted uh, to have on the whole uh, uh, at clip. So away with the contrast, and then with the screen opacity layer style, I I put the reflection layers there, and then I also highlighted that one part just behind the female because you have this strong backlight there. So this is a moving mask made to that. So these are the things uh, I feel I have to do still in Premiere or maybe Da Vinci. But uh, we'll try that Blender solution too. And uh, with the alpha channels, you have to check out that the pre-multiplied alpha is checked because uh, Otherwise, it will give you a black halo around there. And, and with this trick, you can take it off. It's not a trick, it's a must to do. <laughs> uh, but this is for fairly basic information. But for you who are new to composition programs, check it out. Pre-multiplied alpha. Then you get perfect alphas. 
And now we will move to the color correction part. We are done with the reflections and I use Lutify Me uh, color correction files and uh, I checked out some references from Finnish TV advertisements and they are really really let, low saturated and, and very dark and, and very moody and nothing like this bright shiny uh, young palette uh, that, that the Omniverse or any other software tends to render you. I use the Black Clans Man uh, from, from the movie Inspired Looks folder because that gave me uh, that tuned, tuned down, uh, less saturated and, and really nicely uh, blue on the dark side uh, feeling. Check it out. This is much, much more a movie like uh, expensive like uh, feeling. It's, uh, it's, it's super important. So Lutify Me is one of them. Uh, um, there are <laughs> dozens of other ones. Uh, so I used the same Black Clans Man Kuda for the whole whole movie. 